sleep as your body's and especially our brain's reset button. During sleep, your body restores your immune system and creates new connections in your nervous system. Most hormones are also restored while sleeping. That's why a good night's sleep is so important to us. If your body doesn't get the time it needs to rejuvenate itself, you will quickly feel the consequences. Not only will you be tired, but you could also compromise your immune system and overall health. If sleep deprivation is chronic, basically it's just another form of stress, which like all other forms of stress, will lead to problems if left untreated. In fact, prolonged poor sleep has even been linked to major diseases like cardiovascular disease, obesity and diabetes. And these are just the physical problems. Mental problems arising from sleep deprivation include anxiety, disorders, lower ability to relate to others and worse memory. So as you can see, the right quality and quantity of sleep is huge for your health. Fortunately, the most common causes of sleep problems are completely preventable and will be addressed now. The magic word is sleep hygiene. This refers to all the habits that you should adapt that include good sleep. Most of these routines are very easy to adapt and only require small changes. I will now list the most common ones which are seen as general guidelines towards better sleep. First, reserve the bed as a sacred place for sleeping. You shouldn't watch TV or read there and it should be only used once you are ready to sleep. Watch TV on the couch instead and don't use your bedroom as a place to socialize. Next, go to bed and get up at the same time every day. Many of us travel a lot or stay up late on the weekend then it's best to rest your rhythm by setting a specific sleep-wake time and stick to it. Your body will adapt to that schedule and feel a lot better following it. If your bed and wake time change too much, your body won't be able to adapt and you will feel tired during the day and have trouble sleeping at night. Also make sure to not consume any stimulants like caffeine at least 6 hours prior to bed. Now, depending on how sensitive you are to caffeine, you may even want to go longer than 6 hours before bedtime. But for most people, it's a good rule of thumb. Your exercise should also be done with enough time prior to your bedtime. Of course, exercising regularly is important and will help you sleep better at night. But only when your body has enough time to cool down afterwards. With cool down, I don't just mean body temperature. The release of endorphins during physical activity will also act as a natural stimulant and keep you awake if you work out right before bedtime. When you eat your last meal is also important. Some people will have problems falling asleep on a full stomach, but an empty one is just as bad. There is really no guideline here on when to exactly eat, but having your last meal at least one hour or two before bedtime is probably a good idea. Naps are another thing that will benefit some and hurts others. Napping during the day will deprive you of your sleep deficit that is built through the day. If it is too small at the end of the day, your body will not be able to fall asleep when it's bedtime. If that is the case, you probably want to limit or cut the daytime naps. And lastly, alcohol. While it will make you fall asleep quicker, alcohol decreases sleep quality, therefore leading to less than optimal sleep overall. Basically, it prevents you from entering the deep stages of sleep and will keep you in the lighter ones. This prevents your body from fully recovering from the day and preparing for the next. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. If you have any questions, comment below, give me a like and just follow me to don't miss one of my videos 
on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook to your success, your health and wealth mentor.